All right, so in a previous video, we uh, just off the cuff decided that Bach was the boneless chicken wings of Baroque composers. Yeah, I think I mistakenly said he was the artichoke dip, but I, you, He's I, well, we're I, gonna I, you, talk threw, about, you threw me off. We're going to talk about yeah, this. So yeah. today we're going to be comparing Baroque composers with, with their Applebee's appetizer yeah. that they most well represent. Right. right. So today's going to be a learning experience. Yeah. If maybe you know everything about Baroque composers, stay tuned. You'll learn something about Applebee's appetizers mm -hmm. if, and vice versa, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you're more of the Baroque composer guy. Yeah. And I'm more of the Applebee's appetizer guy. Yeah. So why don't you start out? Why don't you describe to me Johann Sebastian Bach <laughs> with just a few adjectives and just information about his music? Johann Sebastian Bach's music is um, it is quite difficult to perform, full of, of counterpoint and demanding and demanding. Mm -hmm. yes, his, his music is very demanding, mm -hmm. but also full of lots of emotion as well. Lots of emotion. Mm -hmm. Keep he, going. Bach represents the tail end of the Baroque period. The 1750 um, historians kind of uh, they label that as the end of the Baroque. That's the year he died. Oh, okay. That's oh, there we go. Yeah. So that really speaks to his importance, yes. right? Yeah. Also very experimental yes. at his time, yes. right? Kind of out there. Lots of dissonant harmonies in his in his music. Wasn't doing a lot of things other people were doing at mm -hmm. the time, and that's exactly why he's the boneless wings. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. how can you even have a wing without bones? Yes. <laughs> like, like what, are, what are boneless chicken wings? I never stop to ask myself that question. Just as it, Patrons in well, the 1800s never stopped to ask themselves what it was they were listening to. Huh? The, the boneless chicken wings are the most important appetizer. I would, 100%. I would say. That, that, the Applebee's it's menu. this show style. It's, it's why I would go. Yeah. Again, right. I'm vegan now, but back in the day, man, I would pound <laughs> those. And, and it had to be after nine when they were half off right. or I couldn't afford it. And what was your, uh, what was your flavor? Oh, barbecue. Barbecue okay, sauce, yeah. Okay. I'm right. not I'm not a hot spicy okay, guy. Gotcha. So it's barbecue. My my recollection is that they had very few uh, like sauce choices. Yeah, there were maybe two or three. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just like Bach. Right? <laughs> also celebrated centuries yes. after his death. Yes. Which these this appetizer itself will be. Yes, yeah? absolutely. Okay, again. Mm -hmm. Unappreciated in its time. Yes. But someday these, these alright. So that so Bach I think is clearly uh, Yeah. Feel free to disagree with us in the comments. I think this is the one that is undeniably true. <laughs> so after this we have Handel. Handel. George Frederick Handel. Yes. Is that how you, I pronounce yes. that? Yes. Okay. Tell me a little about George Frederick um, Handel. Uh, George Frederick Handel was, was very well known for uh, writing operas at the time. Okay. He was a German but uh, worked mostly in London. Um, and he worked for the royal family. Okay. And so much of his music has a very, at least to me, Instrumental stuff has a very ceremonial feel to it. Okay. Very distinguished. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's why he's going to be the spinach and artichoke dip. Mm. Because I feel like the artichoke, the artichoke in general, yeah, oh, is yeah. a very distinguished yeah. vegetable. <laughs> I have to admit, I don't really know what I don't artichoke know. is. I, you know, I think Applebee's introduced me to the artichoke. Uh huh. Applebee's introduced everybody to a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. So I think I feel very royal when I just say spinach and artichoke dip, please, with right? some tortilla chips. <laughs> yes, I feel I feel the the yeah. the pump the grandiose nature of it. Do you feel less grandiose when they bring you out a big bowl of just like cheese and artichoke? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I feel so, the same way. I'm yeah, I, I feel. I feel like I'm working for a king. You know? Yeah. I feel like that's what a king would serve his guests. Yes. Yeah. The mm. art spin dip. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I think we got that down. I think All so right? too. Yeah. Next up is Vivaldi. Uh, Vivaldi. Yeah. Please tell me about Vivaldi. Vivaldi um, was Italian. Okay. And he spent uh, much of his life working uh, at a girl's orphanage. So much of the music that really? he wrote. Um, was for these these kids, mm -hmm. and his music is uh, can be quite difficult. But the the lower parts of his music are often you know littered with eighth notes and sixteenth notes that are repeated for the harmonies. Hmm. So kind of easy parts for people to play. The top parts are always kind of very virtuoso. So easy his, to count, but different. yeah, okay. His his music always, at least to me, has kind of like a running forward feel. It's just a train that doesn't stop moving. Mm -hmm. Um, just think of like the four seasons, which yeah, everybody oh, for sure. That's what everybody you know, knows. knows. Yeah, there can only be one answer for this. What is that? Mozzarella sticks. 
of all these do explain definitely the mozzarella sticks right it's like it's the universal appetizer huh? Kids, yeah. kids love them. Right. Yeah. Adults, Adults love, love them. Adults too. will yeah. lo will order them for their kids and then eat all of them when yeah. they're not looking. If you put mozzarella sticks in front of me, I mean, I don't really eat a lot of that stuff anymore. But sure. Yeah. I will want some. Kids go crazy. Cheese, bread, marinara. Yeah. Oh, right. I don't know. See, mar the marinara sauce would be the virtuoso. Top. That's the top part, component. Yeah. Huh? Where the where the the fried cheese is the eighth note. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The well, the marinara sauce makes the mozzarella sticks. Tru truly, yeah. it, it, like you, can, mozzarella sticks, bread, seasoning, cheese. You can get dry mozzarella yeah. sticks at a gas station. Yeah, yeah. but Vivaldi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sauce. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I think that's kind of undeniable too. But yeah. uh, again, feel free to disagree. Yeah. Yeah. We're not experts no. on Baroque Applebee's crossover videos. Yeah. 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 Maybe. The I think first we one just discovered time. a new muse, uh, a new um, kind of uh, way to study music. I really I think an so. area uh, of musicology. Just well. as Bach pushed forward the just the, the expression of music. Mm -hmm. We are doing so, yeah, I think so too. with evaluation. Mm -hmm. All right, Corelli. Mm. Corelli. Tell, tell me about Corelli. Uh, also Italian. His, mm. his music, um, at least to me, sounds very, it can sound very big and grandiose. Okay. His music is intertwined with lots of uh, counterpoint and imitation. So Interesting. You know, musical lines coming in. Um, being repeated by another instrument in kind of a slightly different way. I instruments enter one at a time, and his music sounds very busy. Okay, so different um, elements just yeah. kind of being introduced one at a time. Yeah, much like uh, Bach's music also also can sound very hectic. Corelli's music, um, it can sound that way as well. But very, very kind of difficult to perform, I find. Mm -hmm. But um, but he. His music is like a soundscape to me. It's all these okay. kind of different, different sounds different happening at once. Ingredients? Would you say? I would say yes. I would go so far as to say different ingredients. So you say it reminds you of Bach a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. To me, it reminds me more of the neighborhood nachos chipotle lime chicken. I have uh, not heard of this. Appetizer. Right? Uh, I mean, just take a look at it. Look at that. Uh, oh. oh. I mean, my. that's scarlatti to the T. That I thing has it... like two thousand calories in it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that 2,000, 2,000 for an appetizer. Like, let me start off. Oh my god. Let me, just for starters, let me just pound 2,000 calories <laughs> to start. What is in that? A lot of ingredients. You know, I, I, a lot of, you know. Yeah. It's meant to be shared. Yeah, exactly. As Scarlatti, as, 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 as Corelli's music. Is. Corelli. Oh, wait, is it Corelli? <laughs> yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yes, yes. Oh, we're talking about Corelli. Yeah, my, Corelli. Mine is, I was jumping forward. Corelli. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> for, forgive me for speaking out of turn. <laughs> but yes, Corelli is definitely the neighborhood nachos. Okay, all right. But you can get them in chicken or beef. I think it's sure. I think it's chicken. Much like, uh, <laughs> much like Corelli, you uh, made many different types of instrumental music. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Secular sonatas, church sonatas. Yes, exactly. Is, you can uh -huh. have your choice between. I feel like gotcha. the chicken would be the secular sonatas. And the beef would be. But you think the beef is religious? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. Okay, yeah, I can see that. And on to Scarlatti. Mm. Tell me, tell me about Scarlatti. You know, I have to admit, I, I don't know a ton about Scarlatti and his music. It's mm -hmm. harpsichord music, so I mm. don't really listen to it. Okay. Um, Again, why, why is that? Uh, Harpsichords suck. <laughs> you know, like when you get a keyboard, like an electric piano, and they all have a harpsichord setting, uh, every single one, and it's like, how can I make this sound as bad as possible? You know, Turn it to the harpsichord <laughs> setting. I feel bad because I know harpsichord players, and they're very talented, very great. The instrument, it just, it, it's a keyboard instrument that inside is plucked. So you press a key, and it plucks a string. Mm -hmm. So there's no sustain, there's no dynamic level, it's all at one dynamic, mm -hmm. and that's it. So a, a, a lot of this music just tends to just be busy, busy notes. To me, I mean, I know mm -hmm. Scarlatti wrote many kind of slow movements. I'm sure, I'm sure some people like that kind of thing. Yes. Right? It Where's works it? really well in a Baroque orchestra, the solo yeah, harpsichord is, is, is tough for me. And it's on, ev but it's on every keyboard. Every yeah. electric piano yeah. keyboard you get, it always has a harpsichord well, setting. That 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 keep the the uh, the harpsichord permeates the I mean the, right. the entire Baroque mm -hmm. era, so the middle and late, you know. So all, if you ever listen to a Baroque uh, orchestra, they all have a harpsichord. Mm -hmm. in them. And it's it's usually the harmonic aspect of the. And they're all um, 
kind of bad. Just like every menu, there's one appetizer yeah. that is universally had on every menu. Do you mm -hmm. know what it is? Oh no. Um, do you want to take a guess? Uh, they're never oh, that you turned good. Off your phone. They're never. They're never that good. Is this the nachos? No. Oh. Crunchy onion rings. Oh. That's it. Oh. <laughs> That's the, har the harpsichord. Scarlatti, we see you, bro. <laughs> the crunchy onion rings of Baroque composers. Do they have to? Isn't? Do they have to say they're crunchy as compared to soggy onion rings? I don't know. You bummed like, me out with onion I just, rings. I know. I know. You just really <laughs> just visibly really just lost <laughs> all your vibe. Well, I'm not like, a big onion ring. Well, I'm not a big onion person in general. Sure. But then also like fried and stacked in a ring with like uh -huh. ranch dressing is just all disgusting. It's the harpsichord. It's the harpsichord <laughs> of appetizers, right? Yeah. It's exactly yes. true. No, I think that's right. I think we've done great work here today. Yeah, I also mm -hmm. want to apologize to any harpsichord oh my players. God. Why, why are you so worried what the harpsichord players think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look yeah. out. Yeah, look Here out. Here come the harpsichord. Yeah. Like a gang of I'm harpsichord ready, yeah, guys, I'm right? They're gonna show up like, at my house. And it's know, like wearing like leather picket signs. Yeah, leather jackets. Yeah. One guy's got a rolling harpsichord, <laughs> like. Yeah, you playing gang music. I yeah, I mean, I, I guess that would be the music to my death. Would be yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at, at your funeral, yeah, which I'll take care of. Yeah, of course. By the way, yeah. on my, my I like how I'm dying before <laughs> you. Fully <laughs> catered. I didn't say crap about harpsichord <laughs> players. I don't know any harpsichord <laughs> players, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fully catered by Applebee's. Great. Right? Uh, Tremendous. We'll leave the onion rings off the menu. Yeah, it's good. Just for you, my guy. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, again, if you have any disagreements, if there are more periods of music or different appetizer menus you'd like us to compare, yeah. please let us know in the comments below. And also, we teach an entire fingerstyle guitar yeah. course mm -hmm. where you can get more wisdom just like this yeah. mm -hmm. that is on sale in the description mm -hmm. below. So, Kyle, thank you for your wisdom and expertise. Sean, thank you for having me, as always. Mm -hmm. See you soon.